Welcome back to Guru Beauty. I am Jodi, and today I have a question and answer video for you. This is a chance to get to know me a little bit better. I certainly do keep quite strictly to um, makeup and product. It's been a while since I've done a bit of a get to know me type video. So definitely overdue for that. I asked you on Instagram and Facebook recently if you had any questions at all beauty related or not that you had for me. In no particular order, uh, I'd like your opinions on eyelash curlers, says MN D'Angelo from Instagram. Why do they vary so much in price and why can't you get replacement rubbers? Thanks, Jody. Okay, um, I, to be honest, I know that makeup artists all recommend eyelash curlers every single day if you don't do anything else use an eyelash curler for me mm, I don't often use an eyelash curler I find that usually my mascara does a decent enough job at lifting and curling and defining my lashes so I personally don't use an eyelash curler all that often I find them quite useful in helping to mesh falsies with your real lashes why do they vary so much in price I guess um, variations in quality. The Shu Wamura, for example, has a very good, you know, cult following, good name for itself. I think in particular they're known to be shaped very nicely and with a quite a wide opening to suit a lot of different eye shapes. I have used many eyelash curlers before that have pinched me, have hurt me, have not actually been wide enough to encompass my whole set of lashes. Why can't you get replacement rubbers? Some brands do do replacement rubbers and you can buy the eyelash curler at least with one or two replacement rubbers but otherwise yeah you do need to buy a whole new set of eyelash curlers. That's about my knowledge of eyelash curlers MN D'Angelo but I hope that that help. Crystal Am says I'd actually love to know what you do Jody. The way that you pronounce the scientific terms for ingredients on your channel fascinates me. Seriously though what's your day job? So uh, many of you know that I am a full-time working mum and YouTube is my hobby. My part-time weekend job. I spend most nights editing once the kids have gone down but I do have a very uh, demanding full-time day job. I am a sales manager for a pharmaceutical company. I have been in the pharmaceutical or medical device industry and the health industry, I guess, for almost 15 years now across the United States and in Australia. And um, mainly what that has consisted of is speaking to doctors or surgeons, talking about the intricacies, I guess, of, you know, um, different pharmacological matters. I really do enjoy that technical um, conversation that you have with healthcare professionals and now as a sales manager I get to coach and lead and manage a team of nine sales representatives sell some products that make a real difference to people's lives. I'm really proud of what I do. I'm very very driven. I take a lot of pride in being very good at what I do so that takes yeah a lot of my my time and attention. It's a challenge to balance everything, but um, I've always been a full-time worker. I get a lot out of it. I really do enjoy working working full-time, but that's what I do. And that's probably something that lends itself to why I would be not too afraid of ingredients list. I don't know a whole lot about ingredients, but I do know quite a bit about pharmaceuticals and pronouncing big, long uh, scientific words, I guess. So loosely related in that way. Kate2232 says, could you please describe the shade of Chanel Jouet contrast in Golden Sun? It's quite difficult to tell from the photos if it's bronze rosy or mauve. I'm not sure if you meant it for this Q&A video, <laughs> but for all of you who are curious, it's quite a rosy, mauvey pink to me with um, sort of pink reflex. If I move my hand, you can see that it does have a reflect in it. If I had to describe it as either bronze, rosy or mauve, I would say it's a bronzy rose. That's how I would describe it. Amy B Girl says, do any fragrances give you a headache? I'm super sensitive. I can't stand smells in makeup, hair care, skin care, detergent, everything. Amy B Girl, I'm one of those people that loves fragrance in products. I know that many people find them irritating, but I actually would choose a product over another one if it smells really good. Pretty much anything I will put on my hand in the store and smell it. Lip product, anything. Actually, that Chanel smells absolutely fabulous. It's one of the things that I love about Chanel. So no, I don't think any fragrances do give me a headache. I think I must just be really, really lucky. I'm a big fragrance 
banned. Dick Australia says, what is your favorite thing about makeup and beauty products? I, you know, to be honest, Dick Australia, I think D, it's D, isn't it? D, um, I, I've always been artistic. I've loved drawing. I've loved painting. I've loved pottery. I've loved all kinds of things growing up. I was the kind of creative kid that had an entire wall just full of um, lolly and chip wrappers. I thought it was very Andy Warhol and very rebellious. I was probably eight years old and bless my parents for letting me fill an entire wall with a junk food wrapper um, collage. <laughs> but they did. I was very lucky. Um, and I think it's just the creativity, the different things that you can do with makeup. But yet, at the same time, I don't really go for, you know, special effect type things. For me, it's about the beauty. It's just about enhancing, changing shapes, um, how colors go together. So for me, it's like that artistic outlet, I guess. On my own face, I get to do it every single day because it's makeup. I do also love the fact that it can really change your confidence. It can really change the way that you carry yourself. It can change the way that other people see you, how other people react to you. Um, so I like the sort of transformative qualities, I guess, of makeup as well. But it's not something that, you know, I think anyone needs. It's not a necessity. I, ooh, a pet peeve of mine is reading articles that talk about, you know, lifesavers and must-haves because it's makeup. It's makeup, it's frivolous, it's shallow. It really, you know, it can make a big difference to someone, but at the same time, it's makeup. I don't think any makeup product, anything that you can put on your skin is a lifesaver other than, you know, sunscreen. I think that my view on makeup and beauty related products is balanced. And that's why I made my channel because I really wanted to give a balanced view that, um, you know, does away with that little bit of sort of sensationalism when it comes to the beauty industry. Ivy on Instagram says, what do you do for work? And I've said that, I'm a sales manager for a large pharmaceutical organization. If you could be an animal for a day, what would you be? Love you, Jody. Well, what would I be? I'd probably have to be a bird. Wouldn't that be awesome to fly? Any kind of bird, doesn't matter. But just to be able to fly would be absolutely amazing. I think that would be, yeah, really fun. Otherwise, a wombat that gets to sleep in a hole all day. That would be great. JJEESS11 says, what are some of your favorite high-end products worth the splurge? Ooh, that is a good one. I do quite enjoy some high-end foundations. I don't think that you need to spend a lot of money on foundations to get a good product. In fact, I have some drugstore holy grails, but I do love some Chanel foundations and Guerlain. I love Guerlain primers. Love, 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 love. I love most Guerlain foundations as well. They are beautiful. They just do wonders for the skin. Probably one of my favorite brands, Guerlain. I do love luxury eyeshadow palettes, so Tom Ford. Tom Ford's got a beautiful primer, illuminating primer that I know and love. I don't mind spending a bit of money on eyeshadows and blushes, but again, I don't think you need to spend a whole lot of money. I just don't think you have to spend a whole lot of money on things. I do love high-end lipsticks too. I love Tom Ford lipsticks. I love the YSL uh, lipsticks. Um... Yeah, my goodness. And brushes as well. Oh my gosh. Hakuhodo brushes. Exquisite. Tom Ford brushes. Absolutely beautiful. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. I just don't think you need to spend a whole lot of money on, on makeup. And it would be something that you should only spend if you do have that money to spare. Expensive products just are not, they're just not must-haves at all. They're just, they're just not. Trudes underscore says, you're so knowledgeable about beauty and skincare, but I have a Question a little out of left field. Who would be your ultimate dinner guests? I love hearing who people would invite and why. Okay, um, let me see. Maya Angelou comes to mind. I, I love, I just stop and listen to what that woman has to say. Unfortunately, Maya Angelou passed away, I think probably a year ago, but um, she's very inspiring. I would love to invite Barack Obama. I remember where I was when uh, Barack Obama was elected. And Michelle too, I'd love to hear what it's like um, being the, the first lady and she's quite a smart and um, very interesting woman all of her own right. I love Kathy Griffin when it comes to comedians. I absolutely love Kathy Griffin. She says it like it is. There's no pretense and uh, I just adore her. Be definitely interested in inviting different makeup artists and chatting to them all night long about their favorite products and why they love them so much. Katlina Melia says, how do you manage stress in your life? Working long hours and trying to fit in home commitments as well as trying to stay healthy is a challenge. Yes, it absolutely is a challenge and I think that you need to be really honest with with yourself. I think that when you are juggling so much in your life, you have to realize that 
something's got to go um, and it's really important to have your priorities straight. I'm certainly not perfect. Do I manage it all? No, I don't think anyone manages it all. It's about carefully selecting what you need to manage. It's about carefully selecting which balls are worth keeping up in the air. So I all the time have people asking me, Jody, how do you do it all? You know, you're a mum, you're full time working and you also do this YouTube -y stuff. My house is a mess. Um, there are things that I have to um, not do. There are things that I, I give up and not do or have someone else do for me um, because I just don't think anyone can do it all. So if you're a woman out there under the pump who thinks that somehow you're supposed to be a super woman and you're really struggling, stop. Stop right now. Don't try to be a super woman. Just try and be a woman. Just try and be the best that you can be. Just know that if you're going through a tough time as well, this too shall soon pass. Everything always does. And just keep on going. You know, it's about how you celebrate success, what your expectations are. It's about appreciating what you have in the here and now and just being forgiving of yourself. Be gentle on yourself. Give yourself the time out. Congratulate yourself. Be proud of yourself. Be your own advocate. Uh, these are things that are really important. Don't be your own worst enemy. I guess would be my my biggest tip for you how do I do it all I don't tips for how to manage stress but exercise is important just do the basics get enough sleep drink enough water try and be a good person crazy pinky says lovely to listen to someone in their 30s like me and an Aussie how do you handle any negativity being a youtuber I think that because of my age I think that I probably don't get quite as much negativity as other people, some of the younger YouTubers do. I, um, you know, I get negative comments here and, and there. But you know what? When you're a grown woman, when you've got priorities to particularly, I think it's a little bit easier to knock those comments down to where they belong. They just can't consume your life when you've got things like kids, you've got jobs, you've got other things to keep you busy. Really, what's someone who could be, you know, I don't know, a 10 year old on a keyboard whose life's mission is to share some of the pain that they're feeling because of you know a hard time that they're going through in their life that's just something that I can't wear and I think you know the older I get the more I realize I've got to protect my load I'm not going to take your load on I can't do it we just don't have the capacity and um you know, we've got to make choices. So it is a conscious choice just not to listen to that stuff. I've got far more important things to worry about. I just block them, ignore them and, and move on and really focus on the positive comments as well because there's so much beauty that comes through from you guys to me. The comments, the warmth, the radiance, the love, the joy, uh, the things that you guys share with me is just so heartwarming and, and that's what makes it worth um, doing all of this. My Romana also says, uh, I'd like to know, do you experience negativity on social media? Yes, I do. How do you handle it? I guess I just explained it. Um, she says, I'm not a beauty blogger or YouTuber, but I hear lots of stories from friends here about the competition and bitchiness among them, like copycats and stealing ideas. I, I would be lying if I said that I don't sometimes get down. I don't sometimes compare myself to others. I don't sometimes feel like um, YouTubers are giving, you know, us as an industry a good name. There are sometimes I feel let down by people who I may um, have felt like I respected them and trusted their opinion and then you know I'll see something that I'm certain is sponsored and there's no disclaimers or um, you know uh, there have been times when people have copied pictures or there are times when people have copied ideas or, or things that I do but you know you just put it all in perspective you take it as a compliment this is just my hobby and my aim I always try and just bring it back to my what I'm doing here what I'm doing here it's not to be popular it's to to connect with you guys anyone who's watching who loves the same things I love if I can help save you some money on a makeup product that's making false and ridiculous claims using beautiful supermodels to advertise their products if I can help bring a bit of truth and reality to the beauty industry and help share with you what my own experiences have been with products so that you can make a good decision yourself um, then I'm doing my job and all the rest of the stuff it, it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter to me someone says what would your perfect day be like well I think first of all it would be more than 24 hours it would involve a lot of relaxing. It would involve definitely a sleep in, a quiet sleep in where I wake up to the sound of silence. It would involve time with my family, relaxing time where everyone's happy and kids aren't fighting and people aren't stressed out. It would involve sunshine. I love the sun. I would have SPF on though, of course, yes. But it would involve the sun. I do love hanging around a pool and being served drinks. 
I do love that. It would involve um, maybe a bit of shopping with friends. That would be fun. Maybe a lovely uh, exotic location with some aqua blue water somewhere and just, yeah, relaxation and sun. Being together with people that I love because there are people that I love all over the world separately and it would be nice for us all to be together one day. Nicole Hilk says, Holy Grail eyeshadow palette. Off the top of my head, the Vizart um, Matte Basics or the Lorac Pro is pretty awesome. Uh, Holy Grail Mascara, probably my favorite would be a toss up between the Benefit There Real Mascara and the Le Volume de Chanel. Holy Grail Cream Eyeshadow, ooh, that's tough. Um, I do really like the um, crowns probably better than cream eyeshadows. So maybe one of Laura Mercier's or um, one of By Terry's Ombre Black Star Eye Crowns. They're fantastic. Holy Grail Blush. Gosh, what comes to mind? What comes to mind would be MAC Harmony, MAC Peaches. Yep, I'll leave it at that. That's what comes to mind. And Holy Grail Highlight, either MAC Soft and Gentle or the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal. Louise Omara. Hello, Louise. Says, how come you haven't used your hubby's music in your videos in a while? I do use my husband's music at the intro and outro of every single video, pretty much, Louise, almost without exception. It's just that I don't do music in the middle of videos very often. I'm not a huge fan as a viewer. I'd prefer to listen to what the person is saying rather Rather than trying to decipher between what they're saying and the music at the same time. So that's why I don't put my husband's music very much in the middle of videos. I'd rather fill that space with talking because if you haven't noticed, I've got a lot to say. Jodie Waterhouse says, restaurant picks in Perth metro area. Ooh, Jodie, one of my favorite topics. Okay, off the top of my head, some recent discoveries that I really like. I've really enjoyed the precinct in East Vic Park. I have also Thoroughly enjoyed every time I've been to Apple Daily in the Print Hall area. Also Print Hall if you're after a very, you know, very um, nice, expensive dinner that's just full of delicious things. Print Hall and their um, tasting menu is exquisite. I also adore Bib and Tucker out on uh, Leighton Beach is absolutely beautiful. I also have had a really good experience at The Mantle in Fremantle, a really cool kind of co-op-y, warehouse-y type place with various different uh, outlets in the one space. They make a beautiful calzone there at the pizza place at The Mantle. Um, I do try to make the effort to go out with a girlfriend of mine who we've been friends since we were 12, BFFs from high school. We try and go somewhere new all the time and Print Hall is definitely our best place that we've ever been to. I do also really like Nobu. I haven't been there too many times but Nobu at Burswood is beautiful. Miss Kitty's Saloon is absolutely fantastic as well. That's in Inglewood on Beaufort Street. Lots of other places I'm sure that I'm not mentioning but they are places that come to mind. I also love the pasta at Sienna's in Leaderville. It's fabulous. Please let me know if you're from Perth and you're watching this. Let me know down below what your favorite restaurants in Perth are. I love, love, love trying new restaurants. What is your biggest pet peeve? Oh my goodness. Close-minded people, probably. Close-minded people who are judgmental, who are not open to new or different ideas. Marissa Lane says, how about a makeup class for Perth area? I love talking about beauty products. I love sharing my own experience, but I'm not a makeup artist. I'm actually not trained in makeup at all. I'm not very experienced at doing makeup on other people so unfortunately that would be a big huge fail. Lily Ung says what is a makeup trend that you're not a fan of? For me I would say um, the strobing technique looks lovely. I like highlight but um, for me in reality I probably would never go you know more extreme than this with my highlight. I just don't think it's practical for my, uh, you know, combination oily skin or my lifestyle or my pores, my skin texture. It looks beautiful in photos, but how practical is it for real life? I don't know, probably not all that practical. I'm also not a fan of the eyebrow feathering tattoo. I just, even in the promotional photos, which you would think would be the very best examples of what they can do, Oh, they just don't look very nice to me. If you have eyebrow feathering and tattooing, I'm sure it's beautiful. I just, I don't know, when I look at the promotional videos, it doesn't sell me, unfortunately. Melissa Gordon says, makeup and skincare tricks for 50 plus. I would say, Melissa, I'm not hugely experienced with um, makeup and skincare tricks for those who are 50 plus, but I have done a recent video on my top 
10 thinking outside of the box anti-aging tips things like you know don't forget about your hair don't forget about your lips don't forget about other uh, areas of your body. I would also recommend a playlist that I will link to down below Melissa from Mary Greenwell. I think it's called High 50. Great set of videos that talk about exactly that so I'll link to that down below. I'm certainly not the expert on makeup and skincare tricks for 50 plus except be yourself. Um, I think you know things like you know brown eyeliner instead of black um, you know making sure that you blend a bit of color a bit of a pop on the cheeks and a bit of a um, you know a rosier warmer lip color but I think you can do absolutely anything I do think that you can wear a bit of shimmer on your eye when you're over 50 all those kinds of rules I think are made to be broken so um, make sure that you're you know dewier I guess in your skin you don't want to go for matte foundations and you still want to get a really good match um, that's really important I think regardless of your age uh, sunscreen as well and retinol <laughs> retinol vitamin C hyaluronic acid sunscreen all things that are really important for uh, skin particularly anti-aging also so don't forget about your glycolic acid uh, and don't forget about drinking a whole lot of water and, and maintaining a good sleep schedule. Sometimes easier said than done. That is all the questions that I have for you today. I've got to run and have some lunch with my husband. We've got a quick opportunity here while my mum looks after the kids. Thanks mum. So I'm going to run. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today and if you do have any other questions down below, let me know about it. I will start collating those for my next Q&A. So I hope that you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit better. I hope that you have a gorgeous day. Please don't forget, you are beautiful. It's one thing to look at though. Make sure you be it and I will see you again really, really soon. Bye.